The bite of the mango. Michael? Oh, I don't know who's How are you doing, man? <laughs> Laura? You're here. This is going to be really close. Ah. Oh, man. Talk about a close up. Yeah, it looks like we all got books. We got to read this story. But you said it can be read in one night, right? In a few hours, yeah. In a few oh, hours. I thought you were taking a picture. I am. Oh, no, he's doing video. No. But uh, over the years, the world started getting gross when we um, actually realized that. <laughs> yeah, well, to them it was funny. To us, it wasn't funny. To me, when it when we started doing that, seriously, I kind of liked it. Like, you know, sleeping in the bush, it's like, you know, experience is something new. So it was kind of fun until it started hitting me when, you know, we started running out of food and we have to go to the town and we have to do all those type of uh, hard things, I mean, just to get through, through the day. That's when I realized that it's not funny anymore. I said, well, do you think you're going to leave? I said, well, I don't know. That answer is up to you guys. Because I don't know. Now I know I'm going to die because when seeing everybody else is dead. So I, I don't think I have a hope there anymore. But you know, it's, um, I guess it's, um, it's something that was, was meant to be. And so after that, they handed me over to four boys who took me to a corner where there was a, a big rock and, and asked me to put my, my hands down and cut them off. So after cutting off my hands, I kind of passed out because uh, tying my hands on my back for a whole day and then at the end of the day they cut them off. So I passed out. When I passed out for several seconds, excuse me, by the time I woke up, there was no one there. They're all, they're all gone and the village was, was on, on flame. So they left. I wandered into the bush for an entire, an entire night alone with no medication, no food, no nothing. And so the next day, I was actually surprised. Me still being, being, um, being alive, like I still have, have you know, strength to, to walk. And uh, I got up and started walking, walking, walking through the bush, which I didn't know even where I was going. Because remember, this is the, the, the village where we ran into. I never been there and I don't even know where the way out. And so I was walking until I found a path where I finally uh, find a man who um, helped me halfway. And uh, I also talked about him on the book, which there's so many things you guys need to know. <laughs> but you're not going to know everything now until you read the book. Um, so he helped me halfway. Because you, you'll be wondering why I actually named the book The Bite of the Mango. And that's the reason why I named the book was The Bite of the Mango was that the man that I met, he was the one that tried to help me to get food by giving me a mango. Even though my arms were bleeding the, this moment because the sun was, was coming out and stuff. and uh, But I was managed to um, held the mango on my with my with my hands bleeding hands and took a few bites and from that moment on that's when i realized that my my will to live was stronger than what happened and i also realized that you can't control life and you never know what the future has in store for you i mean when there's so many other people out there who always complain that they have problems on their lives i mean you never know until you 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 meet someone that probably have the same or the, the worst experience on her life. That's when you will realize you are pushing to your own problems. And so I realized that, you know, my life was worth of living, so I should continue. And um, that's why I named the book The Bite of the Mango, because that was my first food after I was released by the rebels and it helped me to find a way to uh, get to the hospital in Freetown where I was treated for a month, in a month and a half and I was uh, moved to an RPT camp in Aberdeen. It's just a suburb of Freetown. Yeah, I have done a lot of uh, high school students. Oh, I love those people. <laughs> yeah. Those are the people that I actually like to talk to all the time. Yeah, trust me. Yes. 
A lot of times when we hear about disasters or civil wars, the response of foreign countries is, well, let's adopt those children and get them out, and I know that's happening in Haiti now. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, I know this is a very big question, right. but how do you feel about international adoptions in those circumstances, when it could mean taking a child um, out of a country from an extended family? Well, I think it's, it's a good idea in that moment, but also you have to consider that those children belong to other people. They have parents. And, um, you know, some people will say yes for adoption at that moment because they don't have choice. They need help for their children. And so, I don't know. I'm not a real mother right now, and I really can't go deep into that because I don't really know how mother will feel to have their children being taken away, you know, despite the, the everything that's happening. But, you know, you can, it's a good idea, I mean, to do that. You just have to have some consideration because for me, my family, as I said, a big part of my life. And uh, when I came here, my um, the people that brought me here, I didn't know they were arranging about adopting me. But in my family, we, we really don't do those things because you know, we love our family and we don't want anybody to go. I'm a very jealous person when it comes to family. That's why I'm so grateful when my family, yesterday we were talking about it, uh, that, you know, you know, women, girls in a family, when they grow up, they get married and they go away and, you know. So, but in my family, we have a lot of boys. So now we just have to get people, other girls from other family and bring them to my family and make my family more big. And I'm happy with that because I don't like my sisters to go away. So, yeah. But it's, um, it's a good thing to do that at that moment. But you, have to, you also have to consider that this person, this child, have a family. And uh, if you want to help them at that moment, I mean, just to take the child away from that uh, disaster, I mean, do that. And then at some point, you can, I mean, you can perhaps take the child back and give it to them, to her parents or his parents. I guess that's the best thing, you know. So, but it's a good thing. Yes. Oh. Uh, has anybody approached you about uh, making a film based on your book? Um, not yet. Not yet. Um, yeah, not yet. Well, we're hoping for uh, Denzel Washington to come. <laughs> <laughs> and said, okay, Maria, I want your book. I want to make a movie on your book. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm praying for this man. <laughs> 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 